Welcome to Pulmonary Function Tests, a detailed clinical overview, part one. This presentation by Dr. Adetta Loye will provide an in-depth exploration of pulmonary function tests essential for diagnosing and managing respiratory conditions. Let's begin our journey into understanding these critical diagnostic tools. The following video gives a general overview of key pulmonary function test PFT parameters, such as FEV1, FVC, and TLC and RV, and prepares the audience for the more complex steps ahead. Think of your lungs like a balloon you can blow air into and out of. Forced vital capacity, or FVC, is the total amount of air you can blow out after taking a deep breath in, like fully deflating that balloon. Forced expiratory volume in one second, or FEV1, is how much air you can blow out in the first second, showing how quickly air moves out, super important for spotting blockages. Total lung capacity, or TLC, is the maximum amount of air your lungs can hold after a big inhale. Residual volume, or RV, is the air left in your lungs after you've breathed out as much as possible. Your lungs never empty completely. Together, these values help doctors understand how well your lungs are working and if any disease is affecting your breathing. This slide provides an overview of various pulmonary function tests. Each test, from spirometry to diffusing capacity of carbon monoxide, measures specific aspects of lung function. Spirometry is the most common and accessible form of PFT used in clinical practice, especially for diagnosing obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. Spirometry is a key test in assessing lung function. Ensuring test quality and acceptability is crucial. Look for consistent FVC and FEV1 values across multiple efforts, and check flow volume curves for reproducibility. This ensures reliable results for accurate diagnosis. It is important to know normal reference values for key spirometry parameters, FEV1, FVC, and the FEV1-FVC ratio, which are essential for interpreting pulmonary function. The FEV1-FVC ratio, normally 70% and above, helps distinguish between obstructive and restrictive patterns. In obstruction, FEV1 is disproportionately reduced, lowering the ratio. In restriction, both values fall proportionally, but FVC is often reduced to a greater extent, preserving or elevating the FEV1-FVC ratio. Predicted values are adjusted for age, sex, height, and ethnicity using standardized equations. FEV1 and FVC normal values are typically above 80% of predicted. Spirometry with bronchodilator testing helps differentiate between asthma and COPD. Conduct baseline spirometry, administer a bronchodilator, and repeat the test. Changes in FEV1 and FVC values post-bronchodilator provide insights into airway reversibility and obstruction. The next video sheds more light on the, the reasons for abnormal patterns on spirometry. In obstructive lung diseases like asthma and COPD, breathing can feel like a struggle. The airways narrow and become inflamed, making it hard to exhale, especially quickly. This is where FEV1 comes in. It's often reduced because the narrowed airways makes it difficult to get air out of the lungs. This resistance is most pronounced during the first second of exhalation, when the person tries to blow out air quickly and forcefully. Over time, the person may still be able to exhale most of the air, so the forced vital capacity FVC, may be only mildly reduced or even normal. Because FEV1 drops much more than FVC, the FEV1-FVC ratio drops, signaling obstruction. Now, in restrictive lung diseases like pulmonary fibrosis, the lungs become stiff. Here, both FEV1 and FVC are reduced, but FVC takes a bigger hit. The FEV1-FVC ratio stays normal, or even increases, showing it's not about airflow limitation, but the loss of lung volume. There is simply less air available to exhale. Understanding these patterns helps us grasp why breathing can be so tough. The spirometry interpretation algorithm guides clinicians in diagnosing respiratory conditions. This systematic approach ensures accurate diagnosis and management. Now, let's look at the steps in detail. Step 1 involves evaluating whether the FEV1-FVC ratio is below 70% or within the normal range. 
as this is the critical starting point for interpreting spirometry. This sets the foundation for all further interpretation steps. If ratio is normal, this may suggest normal spirometry or restrictive disease. Continue with steps 2 to 4 for further interpretation. If the FEV1-FVC ratio is below 70%, this suggests obstruction. Then follow steps 5 to 8 for further interpretation. Step 2 involves evaluating FVC when the FEV1-FVC ratio is normal. This to differentiate between normal spirometry and restrictive pattern. A reduced FVC percent predicted of below 80% suggests restrictive pattern, while a normal FVC indicates normal spirometry. This differentiation is key in diagnosing conditions that limits the lung's ability to expand like interstitial lung disease, obesity, kyphoscoliosis, and neuromuscular disorders. This conditions show restrictive pattern on spirometry. To differentiate between lung fibrosis and conditions outside the lungs like obesity, lung volumes and DLCO testing will be required. Step 3 addresses normal FEV1-FVC ratio with normal FVC. This means he spirometry is normal. However, normal spirometry doesn't rule out asthma, especially if the patient is asymptomatic during testing. If asthma is suspected, next steps such as bronchoprovocation tests like methacholine challenge or home peak flow monitoring is appropriate. Clinicians should also consider repeating spirometry after withholding bronchodilators for an appropriate period, typically 6 to 24 hours, depending on the agent, to increase the chance of detecting reversible obstruction. Step 4 focuses on restrictive patterns with normal FEV1-FVC ratios, but low FVC percent predicted. The severity of restriction is classified from no significant restriction to severe restriction, based on FEV1 percentage predicted according to the American Thoracic Society ATS guidelines. This classification aids in understanding the extent of lung volume reduction. If step 1 shows obstructive pattern of FEV1-FVC below 70%, step 5 evaluates FVC percent predicted. A normal or slightly reduced FVC indicates an obstructive pattern, while a reduced FVC suggests a mixed pattern of obstruction and restriction coexisting. This distinction is important in diseases like bronchiectasis or advanced COPD with hyperinflation and muscle weakness, or COPD with lung fibrosis, which shows mixed pattern on spirometry. Step 6 involves assessing FEV1 percentage predicted in obstructive patterns. The ATS classification helps determine the severity of obstruction, guiding treatment decisions. It categorizes obstruction into mild, moderate, or severe. Step 7 examines bronchodilator response in obstructive patterns, FEV1, so FVC, below 70%. After administering a short-acting bronchodilator, 400 micrograms of salbutamol, Spirometry is repeated in 10 to 15 minutes. A positive response, defined as an increase in FEV1 of 12% and above and 200 milliliters and above, suggests reversible obstruction, consistent with asthma. If the post-bronchodilator FEV1 slash FVC remains below 70%, the obstruction is likely fixed, supporting a diagnosis of COPD. This step helps distinguish between asthma and COPD and guides appropriate treatment. Step 8. If FEV1-FVC remains below 70% post-bronchodilator, the obstruction is classified as fixed, pointing to COPD. The next step is to classify COPD severity based on post-bronchodilator FEV1. The Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease Gold 2025 stages range from mild to very severe, guiding treatment intensity. This classification helps tailor interventions to the patient's specific needs. The spirometry interpretation summary consolidates key patterns and their implications, serving as a quick reference guide for clinicians and trainees. It begins with the essential first step, assessing the FEV1-FVC ratio. If the ratio is below 70%, this indicates obstructive lung disease, and the next steps involve evaluating the FEV1% predicted to grade severity of obstruction. The next step is a bronchodilator response test to determine reversibility.
Key in distinguishing asthma, which is reversible from COPD, which is irreversible or fixed obstruction. The gold classification to stage COPD is based on post-bronchodilator FEV1. If the FEV1 FVC is 70% or above, attention turns to the FVC percent predicted. A normal FVC of 80% and above suggests normal spirometry, whereas a reduced FVC below 80% indicates a restrictive pattern. In restrictive cases, the FEV1% predicted is used to classify severity, following ATS criteria. Overall, this slide consolidates the algorithmic logic of spirometry interpretation, from identifying obstructive versus restrictive patterns to assessing reversibility and severity, making it an essential tool for diagnostic accuracy and clinical teaching. Clinical example, a 40-year-old male with episodic wheezing, chest tightness, and nocturnal cough. Pre-bronchodilator spirometry shows an obstructive pattern, with FEV1 over FVC below 70%, which normalizes post-bronchodilator. There was also a greater than 12% improvement in FEV1. This case highlights the importance of bronchodilator testing in diagnosing reversible airway obstruction. Clinical example. This case features a 72-year-old woman with exertional dyspnea and dry cough. Spirometry shows preserved FEV1-FVC ratio of 0.85 or 85%, but both FEV1 and FVC are reduced below 80% predicted. FVC percent is more affected than FEV1 percent, consistent with a restrictive pattern, likely due to interstitial lung disease. FEV1 percent of 65% is in keeping with moderate restrictive pattern. Stay tuned for part two of our presentation on lung function tests. We will explore flow volume loops, lung volumes, and diffusing capacity tests. These topics will further enhance your understanding of pulmonary diagnostics and patient care.